Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel, and welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about telemetry in the cloud with special guest Josh Hilliker, Director of Cloud Solution Architecture at Intel. Josh, welcome to the show. Right on, Darren. Hey, good day, man. Thanks for letting me come. Hey, we we've we've been working together for it's been what two months since you took over this new position, right? Correct. Yes. And, and you're hiring like crazy, like crazy, man. That that is an understatement, man. The 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 CSA role, that cloud solution architect role, is so hot in the industry right now, and I feel like. Intel has woken up and said, oh my gosh, we need this. And we need to uh, really kind of pump our relevance in the cloud. And the best way to do that is CSAs. And man, it just, oh. Uh, and you've, so hired some, you've hired some great guys. I, I get to meet with you guys weekly um, and I love it. I, I think it's awesome. Uh, lots of energy, lots of knowledge in AWS, Azure, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, um, GCP, you know, I, I almost forgot Google. Sorry, Google guys. Um, no, it, it's awesome that that we're just grabbing talent that's uh, it's providing a lot of value to our end customers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, um, I feel like the team has this level of infectious passion, right? That when we're meeting like with that. customers and partners that they feel it. Like we're not, we're not, we're there to be that agnostic partner, right? And talk about the cloud, talk about, well, how to do it, how to optimize in it, how to work with it. How do, how do, how do you make all those pieces work for you? So you don't get that. Well, it was great. I was talking to someone last night um, during an interview, funny enough, and they said, I go, hey, what's the biggest challenge with customers in the cloud, right? And what they said is the first bill. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That yes. is true. <laughs> That is because like you don't realize like oh I had all this on in the cloud so great and then you're like wow that's a hundred thousand bucks I just lost in a month that I spent on having replication of my egress charges wow okay <laughs> so, so this is this is where you you and your team really can help these guys manage that beforehand right I mean that lift and shift mentality I'm just going to move everything to the cloud in one big swoop can really cost you a lot of money. Oh, it can. And it, it's like the, the, when we meet with um, certain partners, they're like, Hey, the customer really wants to lift and shift. And you're like, well, why? Well, ease of use. And they don't want to do any, you know, they just want to like move it and be done with it. And it's like, well, they're going to double or they're going to 1.5 X their cost just by doing that without thinking, like stopping for a moment and saying, okay, what if, right? What, what, what is it on today? What should it be on? Should I consolidate? Should I do a little bit of work? And so, yeah, we can absolutely help. And that's, um, you talked earlier about the breadth of the team. I love the breadth of the team and it continues. I continue to hire and build that breadth. So whether it's coming from, you know, uh, the medical industry, right? Whether it's coming from the database area, it's like all these different pieces coming together um, in the team. And there's more, um, more folks I'm interviewing like right now, like I talked to, uh, you know, I'm interviewing now that are bringing even additional skill set to the team. So it's just, it's phenomenal. Um, the breadth, the depth, um, I would say that um, my aperture of awareness in cloud has continued to open up with the additional people we hire and that external in feeling. Something like we heard VJ talk about, where VJ's like, hey, external, you know, we're giving that external perspective inside Intel. Yeah, and it's helping. And, and, and I'm seeing it too, uh, which is great. It's been fun uh, talking to you and your team on the weekly basis because I used to be kind of the only one out in the sales organization touting cloud and hybrid cloud and how to do it. And now there's a huge team behind, um, behind us now to really make this move forward. So thanks for coming on board first off um, and, uh, and building an incredible team. This is... Uh, uh, it's going to be a great asset for um, all of our customers in the end. I, I, that's what, that's my aspiration right there. 
And it's the, the connecting, like you said, the, um, we've got CSAs at Intel, right? And we're, we're starting to explore, find them, connect us. I mean, we are a community. And what's great is even the external, when we talk about folks outside of Intel, they're CSAs, we are one CSA virtual group. And that part excites me so much on, you know, reaching outside of the company and saying, hey, I'm working on this challenge. What have you guys done in this space? Or to learn how to do things. And that's why when you asked me to come in and talk about telemetry in the cloud today, I'm like, oh my, because one, maybe to answer the question earlier is telemetry is what I've been doing the last, I feel like the last decade of my career from, and really awareness the last two decades of my, you know, awareness of it, but really the last decade I'm starting to, okay, it's time to lean in. And and really the last three years, it's been both feet in the deep end of what is telemetry, how does it work, and what does it mean? So yeah, let's dive into that now that we've, you know, patted ourselves on the back for doing <laughs> such a great job at getting cloud solution architects. Um, I'm actually really stoked about it, as you know, right? Um, yeah. Let's talk about telemetry in the cloud. You can't just relegate this to your cloud service provider. Yeah, right? correct. We saw a huge problem uh, with AWS in November. If you just use their own tools, their tools, they had a major outage on the East Coast and their tools weren't reporting it. So you had no idea that you were even down, um, even though you were down. Um, so you need, you need, it, it's a, telemetry is a whole area and I'm glad we have an expert like you on the team. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, let's, um, I'd like to spend a few moments and talk about the different phases of telemetry if I can. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then we'll dig into some um, CSP real deal telemetry as I'll call it. Okay. So um, uh, at the onset, so as you look at the telemetry and you look at what are the phases, the first phase is really no monitoring at all. So if we go back to early data center days in the 90s, we had products called MOM, Microsoft Operations Manager, right? And it gave you thousands of triggers, right? Of telemetry points, right? And it took us a while to figure out, okay, uh, being in the data center area, it was like, well, what's important, what's not, right? So, but when you start, before you start the quest, there's no monitoring. And I still talk to, cut. I, I shouldn't say I still, I, I continue to see customers that are doing no monitoring. And I continue to see customers that are doing no monitoring in the cloud. So it's like, no, right? Like, okay, let's, you know, so there's no monitoring. Then you move into like exposing it where it's exposure of telemetry. So, okay, what can I get, right? So when you look at um, the cloud, it's, well, what can I get? Oh, I can get CPU and memory. Oh, you need network. Okay, that's an added thing. You got to add that. Don't forget until you add that. But it's only at a kind of a surface level, I'll call it, of the telemetry. But move, let's keep going on though. Next is monitoring action where I'm actually monitoring it and I'm taking action on it. And action usually in this case is notification. It's like, hey, heads up, you're down, or heads up, this is slow. Um, you know, whether it's your transaction rate, whether it's your response rate, something's not working up to what the speed you expect. And then further down the stack, and this is where it gets what I'll call the kind of the, the modern intelligent cloud is what it's been, you know, kind of the name of it, but it's, we get into controls and prediction, full remediation and complete automation. And we say complete automation, we're talking Skynet, right? So nice. this is where things are just operating on their own. They're doing their own thing, meaning um, they're listening, they're responding, and they're informing after the fact, right? So a complete automation example would be um, when you look at a, you know, the a, a data center that's doing all the HEVAC controls, all their heating or all their like, air, air control, right, and cooling is all handed automatically, meaning it's sensing and it's reducing, you know, the temperature, it's knowing where everything's at, either from rack at different spots in the rack, different spots in the room. Um, that would be complete automate, that'd be part of that complete automation only for that specific domain. But really I'm looking at the full picture of everything, right? Of, okay, there's the cooling part of it. There's the power part of it. Then there's the workload part and moving workloads around and being smart Who's got, you know, if someone's having an issue, we drain it, we move it. If someone's got more capacity, we add additional workload to get the max value out of that node. 
because what's great is um, is that you may have extra capacity, but if you're not using it, then you're not you're not being in, you're not having an intelligent cloud, right? I mean, yeah, you may have some downtime or your peak periods look different. Well, you got to use all that capacity and all of that you know performance you're leaving on the table and actually leverage it. So those are the phases from no to complete automation. So when we look at the cloud, you know, we're somewhere in the middle. We talk about the intelligent cloud of getting, you know, kind of moving to that, okay, what can I get from a CSP? Um, what's possible? And we'll dig into that in just a minute, but does that, those are the kind of the phases. And I, I mean, and this kind of example is just so exciting, right? It's like, this is robots in the data center, right? This is you saying, hey, I need, you know, you know, I need this to be fixed, right? I need, you know, and, and having it go do its own thing. Now from a cloud, from a consumer of a cloud, um, I, I expect they do that. I want them to do all that. And then for me, my, my complete automation is um, if there's any issue with the DIM, if there's any issue with the C, you know, uh, CPU performance, or there's any issue with, you know, a machine being overtaxed, I want it to just work, like just move. Right. So is that why you think people move to the cloud is because they they know the cloud service providers are really good at this, right? They're good at moving workloads without you even knowing. They're moving workloads between instances as a machine, if there's a fault in the machine or whatever. But I think a lot of times, aren't they just relegating auto, automation just at the infrastructure layer, layer and maybe forgetting the workload layer? I think so. Yeah, unless you're using a, a pass service, then yes. And some of the, and, and you know, what I've seen in the past services is there will be that level of, you know, um, uh, automation, that level of, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, handling the complexity to move it in a pass service, I think is more orchestrated from when you get into the IS space no, right? I mean, you're, you're not seeing that. Yes, you're seeing the infrastructure layer automation, but you're not seeing anything about the stack. So as a consumer of the cloud, it's like, okay, I, I need that level of telemetry to know what's happening, right? So beyond just give me the vitals, I need some deep, raw, rich telemetry to tell me what's going on. Right, so I think that's where we've heard some of our, our end users, right, have kind of given up on telemetry, right? They said, well, the cloud is handling things for me, but now they're not being intelligent in the way that their workloads are actually running in the cloud, right? They've just relegated that. Is that, I, I've seen that myself, have you too? Absolutely. I mean, the, the best analogy is um, saying, hey, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's in the cloud, I don't need to worry about my bill. That Until would be you another. get the bill. <laughs> Until you get the bill. It's like, you know, um, you know hey, you know, the, the, the cloud, the cloud provider has my best interest and my telemetry in mind. And I would say, no, that is not the case. Now, ha yeah. have, the, have the cloud service providers opened up the telemetry? Because I know a lot of times, they won't tell you what's going on on the individual machine. They may tell you on your VM, but the individual machine, you don't have access to that information, right? Well, so let's talk about that. That's a great question, Darren. Um, so for a couple of the CSPs, I see that they're starting down this path of opening up more. But I'm going to talk to you about one specific CSP today where, um, to me, it's a game changer. Now, I'll put on my telemetry hat, right? It is a game changer on what they're providing. Um, but, and that is AWS. So I know we we don't like to, you know, we, we are agnostic. We're in every cloud, Intel is, right? Um, but when I see a capability like this, I got to shout it out, right? And I got to show um, what it does and what's possible. So with, I have not seen this with the others yet. And I'm hoping we'll see that more with um, Azure. I just said Azure. That's great. We're <laughs> GPP together. Azure, <laughs> the Azures of the world. <laughs> so G GCP and Azure, um, I have not seen this as much. And I've been testing it and looking at it. For AWS, I've um, used it, shown it, demoed it. I know it works. Um, and I'd love to dig in a little bit more with you and, and tell you a little bit more about that. Now, one thing, um, in all transparency, as you know, full openness, um, I was talking to an, an IBM cloud gentleman yesterday, and he said that, hey, they're doing a lot on bare metal and that he encouraged me to go check IBM cloud for what they can do for their telemetry. So uh, challenge accepted. And I'll be working on that hopefully this week or next is 
looking through IBM Cloud bare metal to see what they can do from a telemetry standpoint. But for today, I'm gonna talk to you about AWS. Okay. So what, a um, couple of interesting areas. Um, first off, um, knowing the right instances matters, right? Picking the right instances. So, I mean, what's funny is this is, I swear this is not a CSA commercial, but at Intel, we're here to help you with your instant selection, right, Darren? <laughs> well, yeah, and there was a great podcast done by someone on your team, right, um, Stephen Holt, yeah. who talked about not all cores are created equal. Great, if you haven't heard that podcast, go and take a look at that podcast. Um, he did a great job explaining different cores are used for different things and you got to understand what they are to get the best performance and price um, at the same time. So you're saying it does matter too. So two voices, that must be true. Yeah, no, it's, and that was a great um, podcast with you and Mr. Holt. Um, Steven is phenomenal and so excited. Um, if you're, if any customers have an opportunity to listen into Steven, I'd highly recommend it. Um, amazing. I'll put it amazing. I'll put it that way. All right. So, um, we talk about AWS knowing the instances matters. Okay. But before I even go into like what, and give you the specifics on the instance, let's just talk about what you can collect. Okay. okay. So, um, we've got, um, in our product design, we have things called PMUs performance monitoring units. Okay. And these are sub-level counters and they're providing, um, you know, information about the transactions, about delays, about latency, um, about bottlenecks. So we're leveraging the PMUs. And in the PMU camp, there's three different camps. There's core, off-core, and uncore. Okay. What we can do on bare metal instances on AWS is I can get core and off-core. I cannot get uncore. Uncore is where you see things like NUMA. Okay. And NUMA is giving you an idea of where, where are you reading memory from? Are you having delays, right? Are you reading from the wrong uh, NUMA zone? What have you? So um, it won't give you that, but I can get off core and core. And so first, first glance, you're like, well, okay, that's great. What can I get in that? Well, you can get CPI, cycles per instruction. CPI matters because you start to look at like the efficiency of what's happening with your workload. So think of there's, there's kind of a, a sense of like, a, you know, what's my transaction time? Okay, it's this. Okay, great. Well, why? Well, you got to dig into CPI a little bit and figure out, okay, well, what what is my cycles per instruction? How many, you know, how many cycles is it taking? So what you try to find is a, a, a sweet spot of around one cycle per instruction. If you're above two, there's something to look at. So I encourage folks like, hey, that's something that if you're getting, if you want to really do bottleneck analysis, you really want to eke out performance, you really want to get super, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say super geeky, but it, it meant to me, it's exciting because you're like, okay, what's really performing? What's happening right at that level? So that's CPI. You get utilization. Awesome. CPU utilization, right? Great. We can get that with, you know, the CSP uh, telemetry package as well, but we're giving you a kind of a deeper dive on utilization. You can get frequency which is, um, it's very helpful to know if you're being throttled, to know if you're getting what you're asking for out of it. Meaning if I'm getting a 3.1 gigahertz proc, am I truly seeing that? Is it set up correctly? Um, you know, am I achieving it? Um, in, in the data center world, I find this a lot where um, out of the box misconfiguration on this, it causes issues where it never hits max frequency. And it's called the CPU frequency governor, the P state driver, they aren't set up. So in the cloud space, you you know, they are, they, I've seen a lot that they're thinking with the right intent of, hey, we're gonna give you max performance, right? But it's good to know, like, if I got a 3.1 proc, am I really seeing 3.1 frequency out of it? And how that would translate to your workload is, you're gonna have a slower speed of that workload, okay? And the last big piece um, is super, um, I tell you, I went down this this rabbit hole for a couple of months. Um, I started growing out my beard, started growing out my hair. Um, seriously, if you see the pictures back then, it was it was great. But I started digging into TMAM, top level microarchitecture method, and really this is the 
um, bottleneck analysis space. And this is where you can go start to look into the tree and say, okay, where am I seeing? And it, how you use this is we talk about a bottleneck um, where you're not you're not seeing the amount of transaction that you want. You're not seeing the speed. You're not seeing the, um, you know, you're seeing, okay, well, it's just, I feel like we should be able to get more out of this, right? Um, or you're seeing that there's a slowness and it's a gray area where you're like, I don't know where that's happening, which is the, I'd say the worst technical issue you have is a, it's going slow. And it's like, why? Yeah. What, what, what does that mean you're going slow? Like, can you explain it? Can you point to it? No. You're like, well, it's just slow. It just doesn't feel right. It's like my kids last night, um, um, both of them, right, complained that the internet was slow. And it's like, well, what's slow? It, ju it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. God, you're like, no, I need to know, like, are you having timeouts on YouTube, right? Are you having issues with TikTok? Are you have like, what? <laughs> Is, you know, is, is your Apple TV slowing down? Like, wh what is it? Where is it? The TMAM helps you kind of start to dig in deeper. So you can look at, is it back inbound? Is it front inbound? Was it bad speculation? Did it retire correctly? And what's great is you can actually get the TMAM data from the PMUs on AWS instances, and you can do that analysis work to figure out where in the code am I having issues? Now, now these telemetry that you get that you're getting from AWS, these are on non-shared instances, correct? These are dedicated instances. Yeah. So let, uh, let me tell you what they are. Okay. Good question. Here we go. This is the this is this, I call this the AWS roll call for the good telemetry ones, and this is subject to change depending on where you're listening to this. Um, C5, NX large, 12x large, 18x large, 24x large, and dot metal. Okay. okay. M5, 12X, 24X large, and metal. R5, 8 and 12, and metal. So these CM and R instances give you all the data that I'm just talking about right now. Okay, great. So if, you, can't go, you can't go freebie. Freebie doesn't work. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So if I'm comparing, th this would be really good to compare. How's my workload running in my own data center compared to AWS on these instances? and running these metrics to find out what which platform is best to land these on in in AWS instances in my data center and vice versa right so this gives me um, yet another tool to help optimize my workloads right oh you nailed it you nailed it nailed it uh, yes absolutely um, knowing where to land using metrics real telemetry to tell you which one is right Absolutely. Like I almost, there, there's two parts of this. I know we're not going to talk probably about that much today about benchmarking, but when you, when you layer benchmarking with telemetry, you've got your Epic solution right there. Well, that brings up a good point. I'm glad you brought up benchmarking because it is important. It sounds to me like I can't, it, it's not wise to just take my workload and just drop it in the cloud on the cheapest instance that I can find. Or, Hey, I've got it running on, on a gold um, SKU with 24 cores and 128 gig of RAM, I do I just buy that in AWS? And the answer is no. no. Yeah, no. And, and I think a lot of people think that's all I should do. And what we're learning is that can lead to very expensive monthly bills and maybe lower performance. Telemetry, benchmarking together comes to, as, a, as a, just a great solution. Now, you can do benchmarking and you can get, you know, your, your output, right? Like if I'm using HammerDB on a database and I can look at the um, NOPMs, right? The NOPMs and I can look at TPM, right? Um, the transactions and number of orders, what have you. Um, but to me, it's like I, if you layer telemetry with that, then I can look at CPI. Then I can look at utilization. I can look at frequency. And now I've got the full, you know, kind of, uh, kind of dashboard of what's happening to say, okay, this is what goes on on-prem. Here's what goes in the cloud. Okay, yep. You know what? I'm going to actually ratchet it down to a different instance. And it could be in some cases, what we've seen is that 
Um, you may use a legacy hardware platform on site, on prem, and you can go to a newer platform at a lower price because we're seeing a lot of those newer instances are coming at, at, a, at a you know a cheaper instance costs, right? At, per per hour, per minute, and so you look and go, well, I, you know, I could do that based on that meta information, right? The telemetry based on the benchmark. So th this is really, this is actually really good news for the IT professional because a lot of them are kind of scared. Hey, I move to the cloud, I lose my job. So they're dragging their feet, right? Mm -hmm. On saying, hey, if I can't, if I can't hug onto a server, then, you know, that keeps me here working. What you're telling me is no, I, in fact, you're going to, as an IT professional, you're going to provide even more value to the company, saving them even more money if you hone your skills up and, and really dig in, not just to lift and shift, but dig in and learn about the new platforms, learn about benchmarking, telemetry. These are, these are key skills that can help you out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's um, you've, you know, years back, I talked about the modern autonomous data center. Right. This is the on-prem. This is getting on-prem to be, you know, wicked fast, wicked cool. It's got new kernels. It's got all this great stuff. This is a kind of a, a lens change for IT to say, I need to look at the modern intelligent cloud. And I need to look at what the skill sets I need to do that transition and continue to be kind of ultra relevant. Right. And you nailed it. It's like telemetry, benchmarking, instance information, really digging in. And saying, guess what? You know, we went from, you know, if there's a push of, hey, we're going to go, you know, we're shutting our DC down or we're going to put, we're going to have a cloud strategy and put 20% of the cloud. As a, you know, CSA, as a IT that's morphing into a CSA, right? You've got your headroom just exploded from a career standpoint, right? Because it's yeah. now yeah. your value just went up on, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to, you know, I'm going to become a benchmarking expert on this. And it's like, whoa, can we do that? Yeah, let me show you how we're going to reduce the cost of what we, if, instead of lift and shift, we're going to do some consolidation, we're going to do this, check it out, right? Now, if I didn't talk about a little bit for a moment, yes, going to the cloud is about using cloud native features, right? So you got, you know, at, at, you got to look at Kubernetes, you got to look at containerization, you got to look at these great things that have come out over that virtualization, kind of that, the the life of the you know, virtual the VMs to then, you know, instances and services. Um, that is part of what's, you know, what part of that cloudification path. And by the way, telemetry works there too. So when you get into containers and you look at container telemetry, what, 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 what do I recommend? C Advisor. Intel is upstream components into C Advisor where I can get rich telemetry like the core and off core data through your, from your containers. Oh, and that's that just, awesome. It just, yeah, right no. now, now, now it's a question of, all right, as an, I, as I'm transitioning to a, you know, IT to CSA, it's like, Ooh, now I can go, you know, now we can get, you know, a little more jiggy and go to containers. Now we can even better actually you the telemetry and performance of that container. So if I'm, if let's go back to um, a, a company that's now trying to get down this cloud migration path, are you saying I should just move straight to containers or, oh, or do I need hard. to take a step? Because I, I, it, it's overwhelming, frankly, to a lot. I got to learn all this new stuff to start using the cloud. The cloud guys are telling me, oh no, just move all your stuff, from, you know, just move it in. But you're telling me it may cost too much. I mean, where do yeah. I where do I start, Josh? I, I can't do everything, yeah. right? That yeah. would be that'd be way too hard. Well, I think you should do it all, Darren. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do it all at once, yeah. Do it all. Today, just hire no, hire a solution a systems integrator, and three years later, and ten million dollars later, you'll you'll be set, right? We we call this the migration Monday. You just do it all on a Monday. You just, 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 just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Now, um, no, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, it becomes daunting when you look at what can you do, right? What's possible and all the trends and all the tech that's available. Um, what I would encourage folks to do is, you know, start small, look at the right, you know, look at the right applications based on risk, right? Based on like what they do, get, get kind of um, cut your teeth a little bit on, 
you know, because you don't want to move your, yes, you can move your whole DC if you want to do lift and shift, and that's one method, right? But if you want to do a application modernization, if you want to start to morph to the cloud, you would, you know, to me, you would look at all of your apps, right, kind of catalog your apps, look at your tiering of applications, and then start to say, okay, let's, let's, you know, kind of let's start cutting these out one at a time or a few at a time of like, and start to shift them over. So that's because that's, um, you got to make it sizable chunks, right? Anybody that's any kind of deployment, you got to look, break it down to the smallest piece, figure out how many of like function or like app and start to migrate those over. So when I say you got to look at Kubernetes, you got to look at containerization, right? Um, I, it doesn't need to be overnight, but it should be a thought that is maybe you're landing new applications as you're looking at a new services, you're thinking with that kind of that page in mind. It should of, be in your roadmap of yeah, the future, right? Yeah. Got it. So it's yeah. kind of, and that way when you're looking at new applications to land, that's one of those um, key decision criteria, right? What is the architecture behind it? Oh, you guys have set this up with a SaaS service. Okay, or you, yeah, you can use containers for clustering and for scale and moving workload around. Oh, okay, great. You know, it gives you that additional question to ask. So you're a more informed technical architect. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and do something wonderful.